Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm uh, Ravindranath from uh, India Institute of Science, Bangalore, India. I will make a brief uh, presentation on the costs and benefits of Greening India mission for mitigation, Indian forest sector. You know, India is a unique country characterized by limited area under forest, only about 20% of the geographic area is under forest, and there is a large dependence of rural communities on the forest and large dependence on of communities on the forest the deforestation rates are very marginal compared to all the other tropical uh, countries and in addition to that india is implementing a large afforestation program probably second second only to china and uh, according to the national communications forest sector in india is a net sink despite all these features india has launched a large problem of the largest climate change mitigation programs in the tropical countries it's called greening india mission this is a part of the national climate action plan of india coming to the next slide the main objectives of uh, the greening india mission is currently india is affording about 1 million hectare annually which proposed to double it to an, by another additional 1 million hectares. So in the next 10 years, in addition to the baseline or reference scenario for station rates of uh, 10 million hectares in the next 10 years, additional 10 million hectares of forest area would be brought under the Greening India Mission activities. The mission would uh, also contribute to enhancing the resilience of forest ecosystems on the one hand, as well as the forest dependent communities. And uh, as a part of the climate change, uh, uh, national action plan program the mission would uh, enhance the above ground biomass below ground biomass and soil carbon in a significant way next slide some of the key critical outputs of greening the mission it would involve firstly qualitative improvement of forest cover and forest ecosystems in different types of land categories for example 1.5 million hectares of moderately dense forest 3. 0 million hectares of degraded forest, open forest, and 0.4 million is the degraded grasslands, and about 0.1 million hectares of wetlands will be brought under uh, activities to enhance the carbon stock or restoration. Second set of activities would involve uh, some sort of eco restoration or afforestation in about 2 million hectares of uh, scrub, mangrove, ravine, uh, shifting cultivation, abundant mining areas, and in addition, about 0.2 million hectares of urban and peri-urban land would be brought under tree cover and uh, finally 3 million hectares of agroforestry land and social forest land where there is no cultivation would be brought under uh, tree uh, cultivation. Uh, this obviously would lead to improved livelihoods for about 3 million rural households and uh, you know communities depend on forests for fuel wood for cooking so another component is to incorporate fuel wood efficiency improvement cookstoves and biogas to reduce pressure on forests. Well, this table gives details of the cost effectiveness of carbon sequestration. In the first column, uh, all the submissions or activities under the Greening India mission are listed. For example, uh, carbon enhancement in moderately dense forests or, for example, uh, carbon enhancement in degraded open forest. And the second column talks about the area to be brought under each of these submissions or activities over a period of 10 years, for example, 2 million hectares would be brought under carbon enhancement in the moderately dense forest. And the third column presents the cost of uh, you know, investment and establishment per hectare, for example, for the first activity, which is about 50 US dollars per hectare. And the fourth column presents the mitigation potential in terms of carbon per hectare per year. It's largely above ground biomass and below ground biomass. The last column taking a period of 30 years uh, the total investment cost and the total carbon sequestered in above ground below ground biomass the mitigation cost for example for the first activities around 20.8 us dollars per ton of carbon if you come to the last row it talks about totally about 10 million hectares would be brought under the green india mission uh, on an average cost per hectare is about 500 dollars 518 dollars and the mitigation potential on an average considering all the activities is about 1.1 tons of carbon per hectare per year and the overall mitigation cost including largely the investment and establishment cost 
is about US dollar 15.7 per ton of carbon. Well, what are the benefits of green India mission program? Firstly, of course, it's a it's a part of the National Climate Action Plan. So it uh, it combines the mitigation and adaptation measures. So the first benefit is uh, building, promoting adaptation or building resilience of vulnerable uh, plant species, animal species, and ecosystems to changing climate. That's adaptation. Second benefit would be enhancing carbon sinks or carbon stocks in sustainably managed forests and other ecosystems such as agroforestry and urban forestry and so on. And promoting adaptation or building resilience in forest dependent communities, roughly as I mentioned about 3 million uh, rural household, forest dependent households who are subjected to climate related uh, you know, uh, uh, vulnerability, their resilience will be enhanced by diversifying the livelihoods, by independence on forests and forest products. And of course, most importantly, biodiversity conservation in, uh, in the forest as well as the degraded forest. To conclude, the key innovations in this massive Green India mission, which is one of the largest mitigation adaptation program in the forest sector anywhere, would include the following. One is focus on quality of the forest. Uh, you know, the primary focus is improving the carbon density of existing forests, which are degraded, which have which are low carbon density. Secondly, uh, innovative afforestation program beyond the normal forest areas. For example, it includes mangroves, peri-urban areas, wetlands, institutional lands, agroforestry. This is something unique. And thirdly, it's not just carbon, it focuses on multiple ecosystem services. For example, improving biodiversity, uh, conservation of water, improving the non-timber forest product availability uh, from the forest and addressing other ecosystems in addition to forests such as grasslands, wetlands, urban, peri-urban areas where biodiversity should be conserved. And uh, fourthly, which is one of the projects where mitigation adaptation synergy is will be demonstrated. IPCC talks about promoting mitigation adaptation synergy and this is one best example. And fourthly, in the implementation, it's through a democratic decentralization process by involving local communities you know, in planning, designing, implementation and monitoring. And then uh, another unique feature is we are not just looking at the area to be afforested, but we also take uh, adopt a landscape approach where you cover not just the land you're going to treat, so all the other uh, interrelated, you know, grasslands, cropland, water bodies and communities would all be included by adapting the landscape based approach, which is also an approach used by the Red Plus. And finally, it's going to involve multi-scale, multi-period uh, monitoring and reporting in a transparent way. So thus, India has embarked to conclude as one of the largest mitigation adaptation project in the forest sector. And, uh, you know, this is in addition to a large afforestation program uh, under the baseline activity, which is equal to about 1 million hectares. So thus, under the program, in addition to the baseline 1 million hectares, Additional 1 million hectares would be brought under various activities of the Green India mission aimed at promoting ecosystem services, adaptation, in addition to mitigation. Thank you very much.